some praise in the house. The reason I praise him, hallelujah, if a, if a sister who just lost her husband decided she wasn't going to stay at home, she going to come praise God, you ought to give him some praise. If a daughter just lost her mother and a son just lost, and we came to get you, I came to give him some praise. Where my party folks said, where my praise is at? Let's give God some praise. Bring it up, bring it up. Hallelujah. 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 Here we are sitting in God's house. Got a comfortable place to worship. There's some friends of mine down in Texas. Church got flooded out. They can't even have worship. Here we are. God has spared us. God has kept you. We've had three funerals. That could have been yours. One of our members was in ICU this week. He's in church today. It could have been you. God is healer, doctor, deliverer, provider, protector, my everything. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We bless you. We paint this house with praise. We paint this house with praise. Fill it with your glory that everyone here will experience and encounter your presence, your transforming presence, because we don't want to leave here like we came. We want to leave here different, energized, filled with your Holy Spirit. God, turn this sanctuary into the upper room, that everybody in here will be filled with the Spirit and speaking in some tongue, giving you glory and giving you praise. Thank you. Thank you, God for your goodness and your mercy to us. Thank you for your benefits, how you've blessed us beyond measure. God, we come now to say thank you. Speak to us now. Open our eyes, open our minds, open our spirits to your word and teach us from the principles that our life will be different. We'll be better. We'll be better. We'll be bigger. In the name of Jesus, oh God, anoint me afresh as your vessel, as your servant. You've anointed me for this assignment. You've anointed me over this house. You've anointed me, God, to preach your word to the region through the victory and praise broadcast. So now speak, Lord. Somebody's hungry and thirsty for a word. Let the word be prophetic with prophetic precision that we'll hear and I'll speak only what you want me to say for your glory and for our edification. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Put those glad hands together and give God the best praise you got. Come on, come on. Your team just scored a touchdown. God just gave you an extra point blessing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Celebrate the people on the right and on the left of you, on your row, in your region, down your street. Hallelujah. You're blessed. Just declare this row blessed. Come on, you got to speak it in the atmosphere. Let's get ready for the Word. You got your Word, your Bible, any way you have the printed Word of God. Let's prepare our hearts to hear what God will say. Amen. Shout with me, this is my Bible. It is the Holy Word of God. I am what it says I am. I can have what it says I can have. As a faith believer, I can do all things through Christ that anoints me and gives me his strength. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Well, thanks of God, let's go back again. Y'all know where I'm going. Let's go talk to Isaiah. Or rather, let us let Isaiah talk to us. Isaiah chapter 59, amen. We read verse 19 last week, and I'm going to pick up verse 20, amen, and 21. Praise God. Hallelujah. We honor God today. I solicit your prayers as we hear what God will say to us through the printed text. 
and through his inspired word. Amen. Are you there? Let's read 19 since we're so close. Let's read it again. <laughs> I'm reading from the New King James Translation. The Word of God says, read, So shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. Verse 20, won't, you need to catch that, put 20, 19 in your spirit. Verse 20, the Redeemer will come to Zion and to those who turn, catch this, from transgression in Jacob, says the Lord. Other translation says, this is the Lord declaration. Verse 21, as for me, said the Lord, this is my covenant with them, my spirit who is upon you, and my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart from your mouth, nor from the mouth of your descendants or your children, from, nor from the mouth of your children's children, your descendants' descendants, saith the Lord from this time and forevermore. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. We thank God for his word. I want to talk again from the subject today, God's covenant protection. Take somebody by the hand, tell them, neighbor, God's covenant protection. Tell them, neighbor, the promise hadn't changed. Hallelujah. Look at somebody else on the other side and tell them, neighbor, oh, good neighbor, God's covenant protection. Amen. Tell neighbor, the promise hadn't changed. Shout at somebody across the room if you, you hadn't spoken to. Tell them, hey, neighbor, the promise hadn't changed. Say it with a Holy Ghost attitude. Neighbor, God said the promise hadn't changed. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. We've been preaching and teaching from the book of Isaiah, gleaning from this prophetic giant, this prophetic orator, this prophetic messenger, this change agent of God who was the communicator for God to the people of God in that time. And so we looked at verse 19, how God provides covenant protection. Amen. As we've looked at that, you need to get this in your spirit because as a child of God, you ought to know God gives all of us his covenant protection protection. Are y'all with me here? He says, so shall they fear the name of the Lord from the west, amen, and his glory to, from the rising of the sun, which is the east, amen, and when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will do what? Lift up a standard against him. Now, we've been talking about elevating our faith, which is our theology, and expanding our thinking, which is, amen. So, we got to elevate our faith to know that we are children of God, but we expand our thinking to know God is our protector. God is our everything. Are y'all with me here? And so today I want to pick up at point number two and don't want to dwell on the, the last point. Today I want to talk about you got to renew your perspective of God. Amen. Tell your neighbor, renew your perspective of God. Look at verse number 20. We're going to look at verse tw number 20. He says, he says, the Redeemer will come to Zion or to Israel, not only to Zion, but catch this, and to those who what? Turn from transgression in Jacob, saith the Lord, or declares the Lord. So what God is saying, listen, God, we said last week that God takes your battles personally in verse number nine. We said that you've got his prophetic or his promise protection, but we got to understand, we got to renew, say, say that with me, renew your perspective of God. Look at what, look at what he said. He says, he says, he says, the Redeemer. See, God has been pictured as many, in many, many capacities in the text and throughout the Old Testament, throughout the Bible, throughout the Bible. God, but, but here he says, your Redeemer, the Holy One, amen, shall, check this, he says, Holy One, Redeemer will come to Zion. Now, if we make that personal, God will come to you. 
wherever you are, whatever state, whatever stage, whatever page, whatever chapter, whatever situation, whatever sin, whatever season, wherever you are, God, the Redeemer, or the Holy One, he says he'll come, verse, he says he'll what? He'll, Redeemer will come to Zion. He'll come to Israel. He'll come to you. Amen. We have to understand when we talk about Redeemer, to redeem means to buy back. Redemption also means salvation. It means, it, it means to, to recover. And God is, is saying he's going to send the Holy One, which is Christ and the Messiah. If this is the mess Messianic text, then the Savior, the Holy One, God, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, will come as a Savior to his people. And, and so, so God said, God, God says, I'm, I'm giving you my covenant promise, but, but I'm letting you know that I'm going to send redemption as well. To, to, to Israel, but also to those who turn, who, who, those who, who turn from transgression back to God. Are y'all with me here? So, so redemption to, will come to those who truly seek God, who repent, who, who, who turn from sin and transgression to God. Those who recommit themselves, those who consecrate themselves to God, uh, to serve God, to worship God in spirit and truth. God will come to you. And when he come, he'll come with his covenant promises. Because when he come as a redeemer, he's going to buy back. He's going to pay your sin debt. He'll come and pay for your transgression. God will come and provide a Messiah who is Jesus Christ. He's come to provide salvation to every one of us. And as I said, doesn't matter what season you're in, doesn't matter what page or what stage you're in, doesn't matter your color, your creed, or wherever you're from, God will come to you. Tell your neighbor he'll come to your rescue. I, I'm glad. I'm glad he came down to Hamilton, Georgia. Hello, somebody. I, I'm glad. I'm glad he saved me. There ought to be some folk that ought to be glad that, that he came. He, you know, a lot of times we say, I came to Jesus as I was. Yeah, I came to him, but he also came to me. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. He, he came to offer salvation. Some of the benefits and the promises of, of redemption is salvation, healing, deliverance, breakthrough, blessings, peace, favor, love, restoration, righteousness, all the benefits. We, we say God is our everything, but you got to understand, he's not just your tangible thing. But God provides the intangible that money cannot buy. Oh, help me somebody. You can't pay for salvation. Just saying that you can't pay for salvation. Thank God he looks beyond our faults. What does he see? I mean, why do we take the Lord's Supper? It's a memorial reminder that the Lord saw beyond your faults. Saw. You needed a Savior. Can I just keep it 100? Because some of us, your life was jacked up. You were towed up from the door up and the flow up. About to make somebody throw up. I can't get no help in here. But God, <laughs> but God, somebody shout, but God. Look down, look beyond every mistake, every lie you ever told, every mistake, everything you've ever done, the hurt you caused to somebody else and the hurt somebody may have caused to you, every mistake, everything you've ever done. He said, I'm going to redeem, going to give you salvation, going to give you some healing, mental healing, spiritual healing, emotional healing. I'm going to heal your mind, but I'm going to heal your mouth too. Because see, sometimes folks say they got the mind healed, but the mouth ain't healed. I can't get no help in here. Your motive's not healed. Your, 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 your mindset, got, your, everything got to be healed. He'll deliver you. He'll, he'll save you. He'll rescue you. Thank, thank God for Jesus. And there's no limits to who God can save. There's no limits. Y'all remember in Isaiah chapter 1, uh, we started this when we began in this, in this series in chapter 1, verse 18. Y'all remember that? The Lord said, come now, let's reason together, said the Lord. 
Though your sins may be dark as scarlet, I, I make them white as snow. I, if you're willing, if you're obedient, but you got to have a willing heart. You got to want to be healed. Come on, tell your neighbor on the right and on the left, you got to want to be healed. You got to want some help. Just coming to church ain't, it, it, it's, it's not enough. That's just like you sick as a dog. You sick and you go into the emergency room and they ask you why you're here. I'm sick, but I don't want no, I don't want no doctor to see me. You just sitting in the waiting room. That's what a lot of folk do on Sunday morning. They come, you sitting in the waiting room. You want some water? No, I don't want no water. What can we do? Nothing. Because you're determined you're going to leave out of here and live the same way you just came in. Got habits you need to get rid of. Got some stuff, some junk in your trunk. There's some multi-generational stuff that we, we don't want to talk about. You know, you don't talk about stuff at home. You don't let this stuff, whatever goes on in the house, what goes on in Vegas stays in Vegas. Sometimes we need to turn Vegas upside down. I ain't got no help in here. Come on, come on, come on. The only way you're going to get rid of the sin of Vegas, the Bible says, if you confess your sin, God is faithful and just to what? Forgive. And not only will God forgive, but God will bring the broom. He'll clean the house. He'll sweep it. Amen? If you're willing and if you're obedient, God says, I'll heal you. Come on, what does 2 Chronicles seven fourteen says? If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, Pray, seek, turn, then I'll hear from heaven, then I'll forgive, then I'll heal. Marriages can't be healed, families can't be healed. We can't heal these multi-generational patterns until we admit that, God, we need your help. We need help. Need help. I was talking to a broken person this week. They were broken. And the more they talked, they shared that their brokenness was multi-generational. It was a perversion that went back to cotton fields. I said, oh my God. So many people live with hurt silent frustration, pain that we don't want to talk about, but you got to talk to somebody. I'm not talking about getting on Facebook and see some of y'all mess up. You're putting too much on Facebook. Let me just go there a while. Can I just put, can we just pull over? Just put over. Pull over. Let's talk. Let's talk. You put too much of your business on Facebook. Folk trying to cuss folks out on Facebook and tell folks off on Facebook. Put your face in the book. Some stuff you ain't got to fight. Let the Lord fight your battle. You ask God to help you. God will heal you. God will redeem you. I need some witnesses in the house. I don't care what the hurt was. I don't care how bad you've been, how worse bad the sin is. God forgives. God heals. There's no limits. From the guttermost to the uttermost, he'll reach you. So many folks are like that brother. I believe it's John. I'm coming back to the text. John chapter 5. Man been at the pool 38 years. Jesus asked him, sir. Jesus said, uh, do you want? That's the question on the floor. Do you want to break that habit? Do you want healing? Do you want deliverance? Do, do, you want the, do you want what God has for you? you? You've been sitting at the pool making excuses for years. Come on now, don't look at me strange. Just say, yes, sir, you're right, Pastor. You're right, you're right. Sitting in church, seeing other folk get saved for years, delivered and set free and filled with the Holy Ghost, and you still don't have a drop of the Holy Ghost in you. You don't want it. You don't want to be healed. Question is, do you want to be healed? That's a Selah moment. Hmm. Well, I'm going to get myself together when I get straightened out. The only straightened out you're going to get is when you're stressed out. 
You can't straighten yourself. The best way to get yourself straightened out is to confess. I need some help. I need some help. I can't handle this. He's a redeemer. He's a redeemer. He's a redeemer. In fact, Isaiah 63, verse 16 says he's not only a redeemer, he's a father and a redeemer. He's a father. Oh, my. He's a father and a redeemer. Oh, he's a father and a redeemer. Oh, hallelujah. Father to us. Fathers love, fathers protect, fathers nurture, fathers provide, fathers. We call him Abba, Father. Jesus said when you pray, you don't pray like the Pharisees. They just trying to impress folk. Our Father, they, they pray these long prayers. But he said when you pray, pray our Father, which art in heaven. Are y'all with me? Hallelujah. So salvation is God's perspective. Are you with me? John 3.16, everybody should know that. John 3.16, what does John 3.16 say? Everybody should know it, but everybody, we can't assume that they do because there may be somebody here, this is the first time you've ever been in church. You never heard the scripture. So John 3.16 says what? For God. That means you and I. He's so loved. See, that word is so simple that so many people miss it. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that's a father, to give a son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but they may have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Wants you to be saved. Tell the person on the right and on the left, God wants you saved. That should have been a double echo. You should have said on the right and on the left, God wants you to be saved. He wants you saved. And so many times church folk try to stipulate who can be saved. Well, you got to come at least three Sundays and got to give one of those Sundays and got to sit on a certain pew. You got to be able to reach up and touch the light and, uh, you know, we put all kinds of stuff. You know, you ain't been long. No, God, there's no stipulation on who can be saved or how long you God said, I came to seek and to save that which is lost. In, in Luke chapter 15, I'm coming back to the text. In Luke chapter 15, Jesus gave three parables. He really was sharing the parable with, the, with church folk who, who were grumbling about, you know, Jesus hanging out with the wrong kind of folk. Because people were getting saved, delivered, and set free, and all of that. Jesus was letting them know, listen, I came as a redeemer. I came to reach. I came to reach way down. It doesn't matter who you are, where you're from. I came to reach way down. And, and then you had some Pharisees and some scribes complaining and murmuring that he's hanging out with the wrong folk. Jesus was just doing outreach. <laughs> so he gave some parables. First parable was about lost sheep. Man had a hundred. One got lost. He left the 99 and went and grabbed the one. Second parable about the lady that had 10 coins. One coin got missing in the house. She swept the house, started looking under stuff, trying to find where's that one. Till she found it and she said, come rejoice with me. The one that was lost is found. The third parable Jesus shared was a brother, a man that had two sons. One older boy said, I'm tired of this slow living. I need to go see the fast life. Give me my money. Give me my inheritance. I don't want to wait to read the wheel and all that other stuff. Just give me my chain. Nah. I'm up out of here. Can I contemporize it? Brother got his money, said, I ain't stopping in Charlotte. I'm going to Vegas. Charlotte too slow. That's just a big country town. I, I need to see New York. Then I'm going to Vegas. Then I'm going to L.A. 
Then I'm going to travel the world. I'm going to be a big ball of shot caller. You better ask somebody. I want to go where they're dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> Ain't looking for these Sunday school girls. I'm looking for them red light district sisters. <laughs> I want to go somewhere I can make it rain. I'm on. He walked in the room. He making it rain. Make it rain. Make it. He's throwing money up. <laughs> Who is that? Oh, that's big money. Way from, on the way from, but he loaded. Read Luke chapter 15. It don't tell it quite like that, but he went to a far country. Every party, he was the life of the party, Mo. He was. Everybody drinks on me. But the Bible says there was a famine that came in that land. Money started getting tight. His little stash started getting lower. He couldn't make it rain no more. <laughs> I can't buy you drinks tonight. Can somebody lend me a quarter? Went to a far country, lost everything. Famine hit. Economy went south. Famine in the land. Spent everything he had. Decided, well, I need to go find me a job, I guess. <laughs> Only thing he could get was a job at a pig pen. As they say in Hamilton, Georgia, slopping hogs. That means feeding hogs. While he was feeding hogs, watching them winking, grunting, he came to himself. Maybe something triggered in his mind. I don't know. He started smelling that, that, that hawk stench. He started thinking of, wait a minute. First of all, I was raised better. I was living better. I messed up my life. My, I messed up everything. I need to go back to my daddy's house. In my father's house. Even those on the payroll living better than I am. The servants eating and living better than where I'm living. I, I got to go back home. This ain't me. This is not me. But I can't just go back any kind of way. I can't, I can't just act like everything is all right. I can't go back and say, well, I, ain't, I didn't do nothing. Daddy, the reason I left because your rule was too strict. He made up his mind, got his speech together. His confession, he said, I got to go home. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back home. I'm going to tell Daddy, Father, I sinned against heaven, and I sinned against you. I'm not worthy to be called a son. If you just give me a job. I work my way. I work for my food. I don't mind working. I work. I, I work. I work. He had his mind made up. Bible says went back home. Went back home. Daddy saw him. That's my boy. Wait a minute. He ain't, he's not dead. He's alive. Oh, my. Call the servant. Listen, we got to have a party. We got to have a party. We got to do this thing all right. Go kill the fatted calf. Go get 
a robe. I want a ring. We ain't going to put them on Stacey Adams. We're going to get some good shoes. Let's get to put some sandals. <laughs> I want some leather. I want some, I want some sandals on his feet. Keep reading. Because he said, this my son that was lost is found. He was dead, but he's alive. But his brother, and I know I've deviated from the text, but y'all just walk with me. I'll be through in a minute. Brother said, what's going on? Older brother. You know how older folk, folk been in church a while, been saved two or three days. They know more than Jesus. Got more Holy Ghost than the folk that was in the upper room. Brother was saying, well, what, what, what's going on? And he probably got word from one of the servants that said, you know, your, 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 your raggedy brother, <laughs> trifling. You know, he left, spent all your daddy's money. He's come back. And all it takes is one person to pause and another person mine. Your daddy done threw a party. He done killed a fatted calf, got the best ring, got the best shoes. And this boy didn't even go into the party. Daddy came out and said, son, what's up, what's, up, what's up with you? What's wrong? He said, I've been here with you all this time, and you, you, ain't, you, you, you never gave me a party. You never did. You know, he is caught up in never. The father said, wait a minute, break it down, son. Let me help you understand. Your brother that was dead is alive. Brother that was lost is found. He's come back. And here it is, you've been here all your life. What I have is yours. Only reason you didn't have a party, you didn't have a party. Y'all gonna catch that on the way home. <laughs> God shows us that he loves us unconditionally. And redemption will bring you in even if you've been in rags. Your life been raggedy and in ruins. God loves us with an everlasting love. He is our redeemer. He'll take you back. Tell somebody, he'll take you back. That's the message of the redeemer who has come to give us life. Are you with me? The Redeemer. Promise and change. And sometimes people think that their life is, is, is so bad that God doesn't love them. But tell somebody he loves you with an everlasting love. Point number one. Y'all still here? I'm not going to give you three, but if you hold on, I'll give you one more and we'll go home. Renews. What did I just say? Renew your perspective of God, God's redemption. Third point, and let's go home. Stand on God's covenant promise. Let's go back. Let's go back to Isaiah. Isaiah, your Redeemer shall come to Zion. Amen. You got to turn. You got to turn. You got to turn. Turn, turn, turn. Get that in the atmosphere. Turn. Shift change. Verse number 21, this is, our th this is our third point of this sermon. You got to stand on God's covenant promises. Verse 21, read that. Let's read. Let's read. The Word of God says what? As for me, said the Lord, this is my what? It is my covenant which with them, he says what? My spirit who is upon you and my words, which I have put in your mouth, read, shall not depart from your mouth. Not only that, but not only your mouth, not only from you, but what? Nor from the mouth, let's just say children, nor What a blessing. 
First of all, God says my spirit. God's anointing, the breath of God, the ruach of God, the wind of God, the power of God, the transforming, enabling presence of God, the anointing of God. Isaiah 10, 27 talks about the anointing, that, uh, that burden removing, yoke destroying. It shall come to pass in that day, said the Lord, that the burden shall be taken away from your shoulders and his yoke from off your neck, and the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. God said, I put my spirit on you. But not only will I put my spirit on you, but I put my word in you. Amen. The word that's in your mouth. And this is where we've got to get to, parents. We've got to get the Word of God not only in our mouth, we've got to get it in our children. Y'all didn't say nothing. The key to victory and covenant promises of God is you've got to keep the Word of God in your mouth and in your heart. Keep speaking what God has spoken concerning you. In other words, keep saying what God has said about you. What has God said about you? What has God said about you? I told you the other week, bless, highly favored. If God says you're blessed, then you got to let your children know that they are blessed and highly favored. You got to speak what God has said. If God said you're healed, if God says you're delivered, if God says you're set free, if God says you're blessed coming in and blessed going out, if God says you're redeemed, let the redeemed of the Lord, we ought to say so. Tell Nate, tell Nate, you ought to say so. Speak the word. We got to keep speaking the word of God over our life. And when we say I'm blessed and highly favored, when the favor of God is on our life, that's not just some little religious cute Christian exercise. You are declaring what God has already declared on your life. I am blessed. Somebody shout, I am blessed. God says, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. God says, you're new. You're new. God says, you're favored. You're favored. God says, you're anointed. You're anointed. God says, you got peace. You got peace. God says, you're healed. You got healed. God says, your house is blessed. Your family is blessed. Your marriage is blessed. Relationships are blessed. Your children are blessed. You're blessed coming in. You're blessed in the city. It doesn't matter where you are. You ought to just shout, I'm blessed. Why are you blessed? Because God says you're blessed. God says you're blessed. Simple principle. You got to lay hands on your house. Well, I don't have a house, Reverend. I've got an apartment. Lay hands on your apartment. I ain't got no apartment, Reverend. All I got is efficiency. Lay hands on that efficiency. When I'm sharing a room with somebody, your side of the room. Shout the whole side, the whole room is blessed. Your job is blessed because you work there. See, we look too much to other people, Brother Lee, as source, but God is the source. Your job is your resource. Money is a resource that God uses to get to you. So you can pay your tithes. So you can covenant with God. And when you pay your tithes and you're in covenant with God, you're in alignment with God, God says you're blessed because he said, I'm going to open the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing. That you don't have room enough to receive. And I keep back the devour for your sake. I let other folk know you're blessed. I can't get no help in here. We need to speak it in the atmosphere. Come on, speak it in the atmosphere. Tell somebody, let's speak it in the atmosphere. Speak it in the atmosphere. Speak it in the atmosphere. What are we speaking? We're speaking what God has said. What has God said? What has God said? God said, God said, we are blessed. Come on, shout, God says we are blessed. God says his word is in us. Come on, talk with me. His word is in us. His word is in my mouth. His spirit is upon me. Because his spirit is upon me, his word is in my mouth. I speak what God has spoken. I declare and decree what God has spoken about me. Y'all ain't talking to me. I said I speak, I declare, and decree what God has spoken about me concerning me. God has said I am blessed. I'm blessed coming in. I'm blessed going out. Everything I touch is blessed. My hands are blessed. The works of my hands are blessed. I am creative. I am blessed. Come on, talk to me. Say, I am blessed. 
And the Word of God said in 1 Corinthians 2 and 9, but as it is written, eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man the things which the Lord has prepared for them that love him. I can't get no help in here. Second Corinthians 1 and 20, the Bible says, for all the promises of God in him, come on Bible readers, are yes and amen. Well, if the promises are yes and amen, you ought to give him a yes praise. If God says you're blessed, you ought to shout, yes, I am. If God says you're healed, yes, I am. If God says you're favored, yes, I am. If he says you're blessed coming in, yes, I am. If your business is blessed, yes, it is. Your children are blessed, yes, they are. Somebody shout, bless. Yes to your way. Yes to your word. Yes to your promises. Everything you promised me. Yes, God. Yes to your healing. Yes to your deliverance. Yes to your favor. Let your favor surround me. Can I get a witness here? Speak it in the atmosphere. I said speak it in the atmosphere. Speak it on your road. Speak it on your region. This row is blessed. Come on, touch five people and tell them we're blessed, we're blessed. We're blessed, we're blessed. Come on, tell them blessed, blessed. Come on, find somebody blessed. Blessed. Come on, blessed. Blessed. Healing. Deliverance. Redemption. Blessed. I'm through. Stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. Come on, come on. I need you to do something. Everybody on that side, just go over this side and just touch them and tell them you're blessed. Go tell somebody. Folks over here, y'all go tell them folks over there, y'all blessed. Come on, find somebody. Find somebody. Go tell them you're blessed. Go tell somebody. Come on, get out of your seat. Go hug somebody. Find five people and tell them you're blessed. Come on, find somebody. Speak it. Speak it. God has said you're blessed. Some of y'all still ain't got it. You ain't got it. God said, all right, take that blessing back. Give it to somebody else that want a blessing. Find somebody that need a blessing. Give them a hug. Tell them, bless. Come on, bless. Speak it in the atmosphere. Bless. Bless, 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 bless. Everybody you touch, you're passing out some blessing. Everybody you shake hands with, you're passing out some blessing. You're declaring, you're decreeing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Come on, pass some blessing, pass some blessing. Bless. Come on, let's go ahead and put a praise on it. Tell God thank you. Come on, come on. Hallelujah. Bless. Bless. We are the children of God, and we've got to put his word in our mouth so that we speak. We declare and we decree what God has already spoken. I am blessed. Amen. Let me just share this, and I shared it at, at, at Wednesday, so the butler. <laughs> I shared it with the family one Wednesday night, shared it with, um, I don't know where I'd come from. I'd been on the road and I called home and uh, Nate said, the house is hot. I said, what do you mean house hot? He said, the air condition went out. I said, the devil is alive. <laughs> I've been gone all week. I was tired. It was in July. I, it was hot. I came in the house. He said, we got fans going. I said, oh, the devil is alive. God said he'll keep back the hand of devour for my sake. I'm a tither. I give to God. It may break down, but it ain't going to break down today, not today. Went in the house, went out there and checked my electrical panel, started flicking stuff. That didn't work. I went back in there and the Holy Ghost said, get a battery. I said, I, I, laid, I laid hands on that air conditioner. If, you if you're an AC person, I'm sorry. You ain't going to get my money today. <laughs> I said, in the name of Jesus, I'm a child of God. I'm tired. 
I'm, I'm not going to go find a hotel. I'm not, not going to sit under no fan. Not today. In the name of Jesus, you will work. You shall work. I rebuke the hand of devour right now in Jesus' name. The Lord said, go get a, go get a battery. Take the, uh, take the battery off of the thermostat. Put a battery in there and flick the back. I said, Nate, check the vent. He said, I feel something. Is it getting cooler? Is it getting cooler? I said, thank you, Jesus. Now, I'm not saying that's going to work every time with every situation, but that day, I've just got enough crazy faith to declare if God says I'm blessed. And God says, I got power and authority to speak to some stuff. I said, I'm going to walk in what God told me to walk in. See, the problem with a whole lot of folk, y'all think Pastor Hinton about half crazy, and I am. From the natural portion, listen, but when you understand you got the mind of Christ, whatever God says, people call you crazy, but they just don't understand. Hello, somebody. Somebody shout, I'm blessed. Come on, open your mouth all over the building. I need everybody with your hands up. Everybody, oh, we're through, we're through, we're through. Let's go home. I'm blessed. Oh, y'all didn't say it like you mean it. Open your mouth, throw your head back and shout, I'm blessed. Somebody here today.